Hi, welcome to this quick start series of videos. In this video, I'm actually going to introduce the new Aruba CX8300 switch series. So let's jump right in. So uh, the 8360 is a new switch series being launched uh, at beginning of November in 2020. It consists of five models of switches that we can see here. Uh, they're all going to be running the Aruba CX-10.6 operating system. These are uh, non-blocking switches, and of course, since we're running the Aruba CX operating system, they support the network analytics engine. Uh, and of course, these are data center focused switches, so we support HA with VSX, as well as multi-chassis link aggregation. And of course, we support the advanced layer 2 and layer 3 features we would expect in these types of solutions. So OSPF, EVPN, VXLAN, uh, back to front and front to back airflow options for different types of airflow options. Uh, we're introducing a rack kit or duct kit for these switches. Taking a little closer look at these switches, these are switches that are filling a gap in our portfolio with regards to lower density options for customers. So in this example here, we've got a low uh, density 100 gig spine switch or aggregation switch here that has 1200 gig ports. So at a spine layer, this could scale to a six rack type solution. We have a couple switches that are 25 gig capable. So we have a 32 port 25 gig switch and a 16 port 25 gig switch. The 32 port has 400 gig uplinks and the 16 port has 200 gig uplinks. And then we can't forget about 10 gig base T. This is uh, very popular in the data center. So we have a 10 gig base T option, 48 ports of 10 gig base T with 400 gig uplinks. And finally, for those uh, 1 and 10 gig SFP plus type solutions, we have a small or a medium density 24 port SFP plus switch that also has 200 gig uplinks. Taking a look at the way we've uh, built out these switches, we've built them into bundles so that you simply, uh, the customer will simply order the SKUs that we see here in the red circle or the blue circle, and the fan trays and the power supplies will all come bundled in with the switch. So if I want a front to back airflow option, I could choose everything in the red circle here. You can see the front to back options are designated by the red tab on the fan trays and the power supplies. That means hot air is being coming out of those uh, devices. And then of course, if you wanted a back to front option, those could be the SKUs uh, in the blue circle. And you'll see those are indicated on the hardware with a blue tab on the fan trays and the power supplies for cool air being drawn into the switch. Taking a little closer look at these switches, so again, there's five models of switches, uh, 2.4 terabits for the 100 gig and the uh, 32 port 25 gig option, and then a 1.2 terabit uh, fabric on the 16 port, 1.76 on the 48 port, and of course the smaller one, uh, the 24 port SFP Plus is 880. Um, some things to note with regards to the interfaces, um, the 32 port 25 gig option actually has four MACSEC ports on it. So four of these 32 ports can operate at 10 and 25 gig MACSEC uh, encryption, and the other 28 ports can operate at 1, 10, or 25 gig. Um, now, uh, when we're looking at the interfaces on these switches, there's no port groups on these switches. The only port groups that need to operate at the same speed are these four MACSEC ports. So that, that's the only port group, and it's only on this one switch. Um, <clears throat> these two 25 gig switches as well as the 10 gig switch uh, also support the 1 gig and 10 gig base T optics as well as the breakout cables. Uh, so we see the breakout cables are supported on all of these switches except that 48 port uh, copper switch. So those 100 gig ports on the 48 port copper switch cannot break out. And some of the key features that these uh, switches will be supporting within the Aruba product line are going to be the Aruba Fabric Composer solution, which is a new solution being released also, MaxSec, like I've mentioned already, but also Rocky V2 and Rocky V1 solutions. So all of these switches support DCB as well as ECN for those types of solutions. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, the VXLAN and EVPN type solutions with BGP and even an OSPF underlay if you wanted. Now, taking a little bit closer look at these switches, this is the 12-port 100-gig switch. 
Um, all of the layouts on all these switches is very similar. On the uh, front right of them, of course, we'll have the out-of-band port as well as the USB-A port. Uh, we also have a USB-C port for a uh, console port from the front side of the switch, as well as, of course, the LED indicators and the luggage tag. Taking a look at the 32-port switch, uh, the unique thing on this one is those four ports uh, on the left here. These are all MacSec enabled. Uh, kind of like I mentioned already, these have to operate at the same speed, but all the other ports can operate independently. Um, taking a look at the 16 port, very similar to the 32 port, except we don't have the MacSec uh, ports, right? We only got 16 25 gig ports for smaller deployment scenarios. And then the 48 port base T option, uh, 48 ports and all the, uh, the console ports and everything are the same. Just take note that this is the one that doesn't support the splitting on the 100 gig ports. And then the 24 port uh, SFP plus switch. Um, taking a look at the back of the switches, the back of the switches is uh, identical on all the switches. So we also have another console port on the back of the switch. Generally, this console port is going to be the one that's going to be connected into your uh, console server. However, we do have that USB-C one on the front. So if an admin or a technician came into the lab, they could always just simply connect into that one on the front if they had to. Um, as you can see, we've got the... Uh, the fan trays here, three fan trays with the either blue or red indicator. In this case, they're blue, so this is a front to back, I mean back to front airflow option. And then, of course, the power supplies. So we've got the two power supplies on the right, same type of indicators on the uh, tabs on those also. And then, uh, of course, the luggage tag is very handy uh, for easy access to get to serial numbers uh, while the switch is racked uh, with switches on top and below it. And then I also mentioned the duct kit. So these switches are targeted uh, for data center. And of course, we have the back to front and the front to back options for airflow. When we're doing a back to front type option, uh, we are introducing the air duct kit, which can be added onto all five of these switches within a four post rack to help ensure that the air being drawn into these switches, which are usually at the top of a rack with a whole bunch of servers emitting a lot of heat right below them, this air duct ensures that we're pulling in uh, proper uh, cool air uh, from the back of the switch. So it provides for optimal airflow for the switch. Um, just as an FYI, this air duct kit can also be used with the 6300, our out of band management switch. This one is the power to port option, which was released a few months ago, targeted for uh, out of band management and data centers. And then finally, I'll leave you with the, uh, the SKUs for both back to front and front to back options, the switching capacity and the interface scale, but also the packet buffer. So 32 megabyte of packet buffer, um, 16 gig of memory, and then of course 32 gig of uh, storage. And that's the introduction to the 8360. Stay tuned for uh, more details in the uh, product details video for the 8360.